people have asked me several times and they've said, Papa, why are you involving yourself in this national cathedral? You have so many things to do. You have your prayer mountain to build. So why this? And some have said, are you now NPP? Because NPP thought I was NDC. <laughs> And now others think I'm MPP, of which I'm not. I'm CPP. But my party never wins. I don't know when they will win. That is my father's party anyway. But my party is the kingdom. Amen. <clears throat> I'll tell you a story. Um, Nana Puku Foreata is here. We've been friends. We go back. He's married to one of my spiritual daughters. Many of you don't know that. And then Ken Oforiata has also been a friend for many years. And we've met several times and they've come to me and said, Papa, you have to pray for our brother. He's a good man. He has a vision for this country. He has to win the election. So uh, 2008, they spent a lot of time with me. I prayed with them. I prayed with the president then. And he didn't win. Then 2012, we talked, and Fellow Wari kept coming to me several times, and Fred said, Papa, I'm telling you, this man is a good man. He has a vision for this country. You got to put your weight behind him. You have to pray. He will win. And so many others. And I said, listen, after 2012, he's going to need a divine intervention. He needs to provoke the judicial hand of God. Amen. to override some things. Amen. Now, I didn't tell them what he needed to do. I just told them what I felt and inspired by the Spirit to tell them. Then it wasn't long when Nanapoku said to me, I think he's going to make it. And I said, why? And he said, uh, he's made a vow. That if he become president, he will build God a national cathedral. He will initiate it, mobilize people to do it. I didn't take it serious. Then he won the election in a way that made a statement. And so when it happened and I was asked to be one of the trustees of the National Cathedral, I said I have to go talk to the president for myself. I need to be convinced because when I get into something, I get into it with everything of mine. And I'm loyal to my head. So I said, before I take up this fight, I need to talk to him myself. So I had the opportunity to meet him in his office and I said, Mr. President, uh, can you explain to me this National Cathedral, where is it coming from? And after hearing him, and I looked him in the eye, and I can tell and perceive the soul of a man by looking through the eye, because the Bible said that the eye is the door to the soul. Amen. And looking into his eye, I could see into the soul, and when he said it was a vow I made to God, and I need you to join the team to help me honor that vow. I knew that it was a God thing and it's long overdue. And if God had chosen him to bring about this vision and it didn't come from any one of us who claim to be so anointed and spiritual, then the least we can do is to get behind him. So that is my story for being part of the National Cathedral against all contradictions. Ladies and gentlemen, there are still some people who ask the question, why a National Cathedral? I want to proffer three reasons. Firstly, since gaining our freedom and independence from the British colonial power 62 years ago in 1957, Ghana has been spared civil war, famine, and epidemics. We're certainly no better than the other nations in our neighborhood who have been confronted with these challenges. But I believe it is by the grace of God 
that we're being preserved and sustained. And the construction of the cathedral will be an act of thanksgiving to the Almighty for his blessings, <laughs> favor, grace, and mercy on our nation. Secondly, 71% of the Ghanaian people adhere to the Christian religion grouped under the various persuasions of the Christian faith. The Interdenominational National Cathedral will help unify the Christian community and thereby promote national unity and social cohesion. The Supreme Court of Ghana, in unanimously rejecting recently a challenge to the constitutionality of the cathedral project, laid particular emphasis on this point in granting approval to the development of the project. Thirdly, I made a pledge to Almighty God. And if he was gracious enough to grant my party, the New Patriotic Party and I, victory in the 2016 election, after two unsuccessful attempts, I would help build a cathedral to his glory and honor. Amen. I'm determined to redeem this pledge. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I need your help to do so. The cathedral will not just be another national monument adorning the skyline of Accra. It will be the rallying point for the Christian community to come together to worship, to pray, and to promote deep national conversation and the, the role of faith in building Ghana. It will house a Bible museum, even though not as big as this extraordinary venue for tonight's event. And it will be an iconic infrastructure for national, regional, and international pilgrimage and tourism. That is why we're trying to mobilize the Christian community, home and abroad, to join us in partnership to raise the needed resources to build a cathedral. Just as God prepared, prospered the prophet Nehemiah to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, I'm prayful that he will prosper us and make us succeed in our endeavor. I hope that the Ghanaian diaspora and all we well-meaning friends of Ghana will support us in helping to bring this transcendental project to fruition. I'm very grateful to all of you for your presence here this evening. May the God of heaven strengthen our hand as we arise to build the cathedral to his glory. And may he continue to bless us all and my homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention.